If we could prove beyond doubt that our continued posit of an ancient, once highly advanced yet pre-Ice Age civilization once existing here on our planet, we would literally have to rewrite our understandings of antiquity. We have covered numerous sites, found submerged all around the world. Yet, unfortunately, due to their proximity to islands and the continental regions they are found amongst, many are dismissed as merely being 5 to 10,000 year old ruins, fitting with modern paradigm and, alas, avoiding controversy or the questions which inevitably follow. Yet, our next side of interest may turn out to not only be that most important of submerged ruins ever found on Earth but the smoking gun previously mentioned. On the 19th of May 2001, India's Union Minister for the Science and Technology Division, Murli Manohar Joshi, announced that the ruins of an ancient civilization had been discovered off the coast of Gujarat, in the Gulf of Kambahat. The site was discovered by INOT, National Institute for Ocean Technology. Using sonar, the discovered ruin is now being strongly argued as definitively pre-Ice Age, yet also advanced in nature. NIOT went on to describe an area of regularly spaced artificial structures. Located 20 kilometers from the Gujarat coast and spans 9 kilometers, Joshi claims the site as an urban settlement that predates the Indus Valley Civilization. Further descriptions of the site by Joshi describe it as containing regularly spaced dwellings a granary, a bath, a citadel, and a drainage system. According to Wiki, quote, the structures and artifacts discovered by NIOT are the subject of contention. The major disputes surrounding the Gulf of Combat cultural complex are claims about the existence of submerged city-like structures, the difficulty associating dated artifacts with the site itself, and disputes about whether stone artifacts recovered at the site are actually geofacts or artifacts. One major complaint is that artifacts at the site were recovered by dredging, instead of being recovered during a controlled archaeological excavation." End quote. Simply put, due to the fact that it has not been excavated properly, and we predict probably never will, academia are dismissing this ancient city as simply unconfirmed. We feel a quite ridiculous position to take despite NIOT's supporting data of its existence due to its accidental discovery, presumably via dredging. We find the marine archaeology in the Gulf of Kambat highly compelling. There are countless submerged and very ancient cities dotted across the oceans of our Earth. Many of these cities all but forgotten until their rediscoveries within the modern era. When attempting to locate these mysterious places, it is beneficial for one to be aware of past sea levels. This, of course, can make the task of locating these submerged cities an awful lot easier. The main consensus is that world sea levels have largely stayed the same since the arrival of Homo sapiens, only really dipping or rising by around 120 meters across the Earth. When discussing these finds, you will, on all but a few exceptions, find yourself within these specific regions. One of the more interesting exceptions to this rule has to be the underwater city which was discovered just off the coast of Cuba a few years ago, a submerged city, which sits over 700 meters below the waves. This depth, of course, being far below that which has experienced a breach over the past hundred or so thousand years. 
a theory that the landmass once rested upon the surface, subsequently being sunk by tectonic activities, was argued. Yet since its exploration as a possibility, it has been found to have not been the case. The results of this investigation strongly indicating that this city and its accompanying landmass somehow remained under the waves for more than 100,000 years. Greenville Draper of Florida's International University concluded that it was highly unlikely that such a tectonic event could have occurred, quoted as saying, Nothing of this magnitude has been reported ever before, especially from the Mediterranean. Draper's, among many others' analysis, has of course come to conclusions. Conclusions which thankfully appear honest, making them extremely controversial, yet as with other fields of study in life, they are reluctant to reveal the implications of such conclusions. For example, if the research is correct, and judging by the extremely capable people tasked with this undertaking, there is no reason to suspect it is not, then this submerged city has remained submerged for over a hundred thousand years. This gives us two possible alternatives. One, that the city predates the arrival of developed man on Earth, according to academically accepted timelines. Or two, it reinforces our ever-growing accusations here at Mystery History of a past here on Earth which is unimaginably more ancient than we have been led to believe a human society which has flourished and regressed on no less than three occasions. It could, of course, be both. There is a possibility that this ancient city was indeed built submerged under the waves by a once highly advanced civilization of Homo sapiens. Yet a more likely scenario, of course, would be that this ancient city was constructed at a time when the Caribbean Sea was a dry basin, and as the sea began to form, it was subsequently submerged. Yet, alas, modern academia readily rejects such a hypothesis. So, if we do not accept this as a likely possibility, then we must conclude that a primitive ancient culture, with primitive stone tools, and certainly no diving equipment, were somehow responsible for the construction of this submerged city, complete with enormous pyramids, on a foundation resting over 700 meters beneath the Caribbean Sea. Hey guys! In 1998, a circle of timber posts within the intertidal zone on the North Norfolk coast was brought to the attention of the Norfolk County Council Archaeological Service. A subsequent program of archaeological recording and dating revealed that the structure was constructed in the spring or early summer of 2049 BC, during the Early Bronze Age. Because of the perceived threat of damage and erosion from the sea, a rescue excavation was undertaken during the summer months of 1999. The structure was entirely excavated, involving the removal of the timbers and a program of stratigraphic recording and environmental analysis. A survey was also undertaken within the environs of the site, which has identified further timber structures dating from the Bronze Age. Detailed examination of the timber from the circle has produced a wealth of unexpected information, which has greatly added to our understanding of early Bronze Age woodworking, organization of labor, and the layout and construction of timber ritual monuments. The purpose of Seahenge will undoubtedly be added to the heated debate surrounding that of Stonehenge. The strongest argument so far for such henges has been that of celebratory pilgrimage sites during solstices. Although they remain a mystery, the excavation report was published in 2004 in the National Journal of Proceedings of the Prehistoric Society. A more popular, heavily illustrated account will be published by English Heritage this year. The Holm Tilmer Circle, aka Seahenge, is currently undergoing conservation treatment at the Mary Rose Center in Portsmouth. When this work is completed, the treated timbers will be displayed in the refurbished Lynn Museum in King's Linen, the UK. As always, thanks for watching, guys. Take care. The Sea of Galilee. Although not a real sea, it has remained named as such due to the staunch traditions, mainly religious, which have grown and flourished from around its shores. The first century historian, Flavius Josephus, for example, was so impressed by the areas surrounding the Sea of Galilee, he once wrote, quote, One may call this place the ambition of nature. Reporting a thriving fishing industry around the lake, with well over 200 boats regularly working the waters, archaeologists have since discovered only one such fishing vessel, found in 1986. It has been nicknamed the Jesus Boat. According to Christian religion, 
Much of the ministry of Jesus Christ himself actually occurred upon the shores of the Sea of Galilee, and a recent discovery within the waters themselves has continued to perplex specialists within the area, astounding all who have been exploring said discovery, and weighs an estimated 60,000 tons according to researchers. An astonishing size, making it much heavier than any of our modern-day warships. Rising nearly 32 feet out of the ancient sea's sediment, it also has a diameter of about 230 feet. Stonehenge, for example, which is an impressive ancient structure in its own right, has an outer stone circle diameter of only half that. First discovered in 2003 using sonar exploration of the southwest portion of the sea, divers have since been down to investigate the presumably ancient structure, writing regarding their finds within the latest issue of International Journal of Nautical Archaeology. Researcher Yitzhak Paz, Antiquities Authority, and Ben Gurion University believes it could date back more than 4,000 years. Quote, the more logical possibility is that it belongs to the 3rd millennium BC, because there are other megalithic phenomena from that time that are found close by, Paz told LiveScience.com in an interview, noting that those sites are associated with fortified settlements. Could it be that this is where the peoples of Bet Yura buried and honored their dead? Is this a proverbial city of the dead, or something else entirely? As more research is undertaken, it is only a matter of time before we understand this amazing structure for what it truly once was. We will of course keep you posted. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care.